Hello everyone, and welcome to another edition of the Bibliophiles. Today I'm going to be talking about The Draco Tavern by Larry Niven. I think that's how it's pronounced. Anyway, um, it's a short story compilation about this guy who opens up, of course, a tavern which um, caters to um, all sorts of different alien species. <clears throat> I'm just going to read a couple, read the first three pages so I can like get the setup up there. Um, <clears throat> for most of the stories, assume that the Draco Tavern is roughly 30 years old, and the date is in the 2030s. At some near future date, they say uh, two years from whenever you're reading the, any given story, a tremendous spacecraft arrived and took orbit around the Earth's moon. Smaller boats, landers, came across down on the lines of the Earth's magnetic field near the North Pole. It's something about how the motors work. Maybe looked at, they looked at Antarctica over too, but nobody came there to talk. <clears throat> they set up their permanent spaceport in Mount Forel in Siberia. Negotiations with the United Nations got them certain concessions. <clears throat> A few people grew conspicuously rich from the secrets they learned from the taking, talking to aliens. Siberia and the UN to restrict the Mount, access to Mount Forel and create subsystems to support both alien and human visitors. A town grew up eventually. Rick Schumann uh, grew rich from a Chirpsithra secret it established and he then established the Drake the tavern able to service various species of visiting alien over the years and decades since the tavern expanded its size and capabilities the tavern features huge storage facilities foodstuffs drinkstuffs and, and for a growing number of species kept carefully categorized floating tables needed high chairs if, if short species one of one face to face with a chirp privacy shields to throttle sound leaking across the border of any table <clears throat> universal translators which will turn out to be intelligent minds themselves if I ever get around to writing that story a variety of toilets never yet described universal plugs for computers and other human and alien machinery and whichever else I could think of in stories set earlier the tavern is smaller and more. Is in the story said earlier. This tavern is smaller and more primitive. The only face always to be seen in the Draco Tavern is Rick Schumann's. <clears throat> Rick's service staff are usually scientists of various kinds, of ten anthropologists. There's no better to, way to learn what human being is than by studying what we are not. When they learned enough to go off and publish, they or they found a business uh, based on what they've learned. Mount Forel isn't the center of culture, <clears throat> after all. Not a place to stay forever, except for Rick. Human visitors may be scientists of great variety, astronauts whose ships are Chirpsithra designed, media under heavy restriction, workers from the from Mount Forel Spaceport, or anyone who can walk his way in. Um, the ships come and go. They move at just less than light speed. Probably no individual alien will be seen more than once in this century. <clears throat> A few species do regularly show up in the background, though. First are the Chirpsithra, or Chirps are the crew and builders of interstellar spacecraft. Not everything is known about the Chirpsithra. They keep many secrets. They evolved on a world orbiting close to a red dwarf star. <clears throat> Half the stars in the galaxy are red dwarfs, and most of their worlds are claimed by Chirpsithra. When a Chirp says that Chirpsithra own the galaxy, she means those. She doesn't mean Earth. <clears throat> Chirpsithra claims to be billions of years civilized. 
that is capable of space travel. <coughs> the only sin they've exposed in the public is the Sparker, a device that sends currents between uh, Chirp Sithra's digits. <coughs> it makes them a appear drunk, but keeps a lot, lot of Sparkers around for them. <coughs> Their language is something called Lotl. They all look pretty much alike, except for some very old, not so evolved individuals. They're <clears throat> salmon red exoskeletal, like lobsters. They stand 11 feet tall and weigh 120 pounds. The elderly are shorter with graying shells. See the green marauder. They're all female. <clears throat> Nothing is known about the males, though it seems clear that they exist. And um, <clears throat> another species called the Glukstithoptok. If I'm mispronouncing that, somebody please put in a comment correcting me. Because I really, really would like to know. Are gray compact beings that, uh, beings skilled at biological sciences dealing with them is chancy, see, assimilating our culture and the wisdom of demons, <clears throat> and folk. Look something like wolves with their heads on upside down. Their world never evolved predator birds. Socially they're hunters and great travelers. Rick hunted with them in folk tale. <clears throat> There are others. New aliens appear in almost every story. Many of aliens' environment gear, some of the table offers minimum protection in altered atmosphere, different lighting for some customers that's sufficient. Some need full body armor or rolling fish bowls, etc. Chirps don't need anything but ruby sunglasses. Any life form's ideal environment, including food and drinks, see the real thing can be described in five symbols for humans it's <clears> tt <throat> hatch x hatch next new ool or uh, i mean tt hatch next ool written as tt number <clears throat> and i don't know what the other symbols look like beyond this i hope the stories will speak for themselves so yeah, overall it's, um, like I said about um, this guy that opens up at this tavern, caters to all the different species, and their following are a bunch of neat little stories about how we, about, um, you know, the stuff that happens. Now, I'd say my personal favorite is a story that happens relatively early on titled The War Movie, which reveals, um, like this alien comes in, asks them why they don't have any, why they don't do any wars anymore, and um, it's really cool is um, that um, that um, the um, reveals that all of those saucers that we've seen are actually like surveillance equipment for trying to make a movie because like long time prior to the during World War II, some aliens came by and were out of orbit. Drop some cameras to like film the world Second World War, and um, they and they <clears throat> shot it like in like a documentary, and then they came back and they made this huge killing because you know everyone thought that it was all exciting, and cool, and stuff, and <clears throat> especially the ending where there was where was, um, two cities were like almost wiped out by atomic bomb, where like half obliterated by nuclear bombs, I mean, atomic explosions, and, um, and so eventually they, it was a huge hit, so they came back with a lot more gear and being glad that we didn't wipe ourselves out with, you know, like some sort of nuclear war, and um, later on they, <clears throat> and eventually there was like a, this huge disappointment, you know, like, Oh, they're not having any more wars. It's not entertaining anymore. This is boring. And, um, you know, over the, over the decades, the, it eventually just kept changing hands again and again. And I thought that was pretty interesting. 
like I, especially since, like I said, it t says that all that's those flying saucers that you hear about are actually, you know, um, surveillance equipment and camera gear for trying to shoot a movie. It kind of reminds me of that um, episode of the South Park where the aliens arrive and it's revealed that Earth is one big um, reality TV show or whatever. Yeah, it's kind of like that. And, um, really, the, um, although I should say, like, there's one thing that really bugged the crap out of me. That was the character Rick Schumann. And that was really just his name. as uh, Schumann. I'm like, thinking, like, really? Schumann? Schumann the human? And that was just a lousy, it's just a stupid name. But apart from that, like, but that doesn't really affect the overall score that I'm going to give. You know, overall, uh, I'm going to give this a full 5 out of 5. I really enjoy every, every story here, you know. <clears throat> you know, I thought the, the premise of a guy who owns a bar that caters to all the different stuff species in the galaxy is really interesting or at least the ones that go come here is interesting also I kind of really like um, one thing that I felt was kind of neat was that um, you know, most, a lot of other species a lot of other um, <clears throat> science fiction type shows have this kind of nasty habit of like Mary suing the crap out of humanity like Star Trek or um, Maybe sometimes Babylon 5, where they always depict humans as like this great noble species. Or I suppose the most blatant would be um, Halo, where apparently the ancients decided to refer to the humans as the reclaimers and, you know, all that stuff. But, um, like I said, it makes humans just this relatively normal people that are, for the most part, out of the way, nowhere near the heart of like the real merchants stuff that's going on and um that makes it interesting it kind of makes me feel like wanting to see more of this universe it's just a really interesting thing that i thought was really cool and um yeah it's just really enjoyable and great loved it like i said um anyway um get it it's great loved it till next time i'm your host signing out. See you later.